In this video, I want to talk about the riskiest industry to rely on for capital growth as a property investor and why I see so many investors make this such a common mistake and it costs them. Hi, it's Nero here from Investment Rise and I was recently speaking to a client who sought me out. She said, Nero, we've made such a big mistake when it came to our property investing. Uh, we lost money on our first investment. We don't want to make that mistake again. And uh, that's why we're seeking you out. And I was like, okay, I appreciate that. But what was this big mistake? And she said, she looked over at her husband and, and smiled. And then she went, well, it was a few years ago. And uh, we went on holiday and uh, we had a great time. And uh, my husband, of course, she blamed him, uh, said that uh, while we're here, why don't we just uh, drop into a local real estate office just out of interest? Uh, and before we knew what happened, we were in such a good mood, we ended up walking away having bought a two bedroom uh, beachfront apartment. And we initially thought, oh, look, that's going to be fine. We like the area. We can uh, come back in and have a holiday whenever we want to. It's all going to be fine. However, what we suffered through for the next few years was six months on average vacancy factor per year. We couldn't sell the property because we couldn't get the price that we, we needed to uh, until a few years later. And it caused us some significant heartache. Worse, uh, even when uh, the tourism season was supposed to be on, sometimes it was really good times. Other times it wasn't so good. And we were constantly worried about cash flow constantly worried about whether we can get the property rented. All of a sudden, what was supposed to be this dream purchase ended up becoming a nightmare. And we didn't want that to happen. And I see this happen so many times for, for, for investors who are looking to, to invest and get carried away emotionally. And the biggest mistake I think an investor could ever make is to invest for capital growth in a single industry town. And what's the riskiest industry of all to invest in? It's tourism. Why? Because tourism is so fickle. The, the weather, weather could change. Uh, another area could outmarket you. For example, if you thought uh, you made a good decision by buying maybe a two bedroom unit in the Gold Coast, and then next thing you know, uh, Hawaii is doing a massive advertising campaign. All the international tourists go to Hawaii next year rather than the Gold Coast. You now have a problem getting uh, the, those rents that you wanted to. Your tourism is also seasonal. So sometimes you may get really good rents. Other times it's just going to sit there, but you've still got to pay the mortgage. You've still got to pay the interest costs. Okay. So always be careful about investing in tourism driven areas. Right now I'm seeing a big push by people to uh, recommend buying uh, in areas that are tourism driven. In fact, I was speaking to someone else recently uh, who said, you know, I'm really confused. I went to this particular property group and uh, they told me that I should buy in this area I'm going to 10% capital growth per year for the next few years uh, and it's all going to be because of tourism. I was like, okay. But then I did some further research and I found out that the area they were looking to invest in or had been recommended had a very high vacancy factor. So these poor guys were going to struggle to get their property rented. Uh, it didn't have a growing population. Uh, there wasn't really any job creating infrastructure there. And uh, yes, there was tourism, but it was very fickle. And I said, how is this going to give you 10% capital growth? On the flip side, what I showed them then was how they could buy in an area which was right next to a $1.5 billion town center redevelopment and $800 million Westfield had been completed. The area had one of the lowest vacancy rates in the country. It also had a growing population. Uh, there was multiple industries around the area and it was tipped for some really good capital growth. But you could also see the reasons why. So when you're looking to invest, make sure you don't get carried away by how nice an area looks, uh, how you might want to live there, or maybe you've had a good experience because uh, you had a holiday there. You don't want to get carried away by emotion. Focus on investing based on data. Focus on investing based on facts. And uh, stay away from single industry driven areas. Stay away from tourism driven areas. Look at multi-industry areas that have got a growing population where it's easy to get your property rented, where the cash flow is going to uh, really help. Like for example, in this particular uh, example where I spoke about this, this, this second client, um, we found her a property for a price at about $650,000 where the rent covered the mortgage and gave us some extra 
Plus, I showed her how to apply a twist in her investment strategy so she could make an extra 60 odd thousand dollars, 60 to 80 thousand dollars in equity uplift in just the first 12 months. Okay, so definitely be careful when it comes to investing. Do your due diligence. And if you take nothing away from this, stay away from tourism. Because look, think about what happened in Sydney and Melbourne when those areas were booming. Yes, they get tourism, but that wasn't the driver. It was everything else that I've spoken about in, in this video. So stay away from tourism driven areas, stay away from single industry towns, and you'll avoid some of the most common mistakes most investors make. I really hope this helps. And look, if you feel like it can help someone else who's looking to invest, please share it. I'd really appreciate it. Bye for now.